All right, the Zoom room is filling up. It must mean it is eight o'clock on Thursday night. It must be time for Football Letter Live. Welcome everybody in. As always, let us know who you are and where you're from. You can drop that information in the chat box. We have a great episode lined up for you tonight. We welcome current cornerbacks coach and defensive recruiting coordinator for Penn State, Terry Smith. Terry was also a standout wide, uh, wide receiver for the Nittany Lions from 1988 to 1991. Uh, he is uh, played a big role in yesterday's recruiting class that was signed by Coach Franklin and the rest of the Nittany Lion team. And uh, we're going to talk to Terry a little bit about that class, a little bit about his time as a Nittany Lion. So we look forward to sharing our interview with Terry Smith in just a couple minutes. I see Neil Baiji down in Naples. I see Joe Clifford in Cunningham. Mike right here in snowy Happy Valley. Russ up in Syracuse. The gang's all here, John. We got some very familiar names. Oh, in yes. The cat box tonight. Those are loyal followers. Absolutely. I, I, can't, I can't go without mentioning Kevin Lashane down in Aiken, Augusta. He's always the first one in, in the chat box there. Right. Pat right. and Ed Nicolana, Nicolanco. Murray Handler again from Long Island. <laughs> Dave McClung from Avalon, New Jersey. Good to see you, Dave. And Dave Alexander, good to see your name in here. You're welcome. Rick Schultz. Hi, Rick. There's no, there's no snow in Augusta, Georgia. <laughs> uh, that goes with our, our 15 inches of snow that we have here in Center County right. of last night. Right. So we are about to get started. Oh, I see Terry. Excellent. We will get started with him then in just a minute. Where else would you rather be than a Zoom full of Penn Staters? I'm Paul Clifford, CEO of the Penn State Alumni Association, and welcome to Football Letter Live. Tonight, we welcome Coach Terry Smith to talk about this week's signing day ceremony and the incoming recruiting class. Coach Smith is also an alumnus and letterman of the football program. We'll ask him his perspective about the Penn, about the Penn State alumni network, the support system that we have in place at Penn State for our new recruits and, and dive into his time as a Nittany Lion on the gridiron. We're encouraging you to share questions for Coach Smith tonight. You can do that in the Q&A feature on Zoom or drop your questions uh, in, the, in the chat box or in the comments on Facebook. We'll try to get to as many of those as we possibly can. As always, uh, this event is closed captioned. You can activate closed captions in your Zoom video window by closing, by clicking on closed caption and then clicking on show subtitles. Tonight, as always, I am joined by the legendary editor of the football letter, John Black. John, how are you this evening? Hi, Paul. I'm, I'm fine. Just had fun shoveling snow this afternoon, <laughs> but I'm in great shape. I hope you're doing well, too. I'm doing great. John, as you know, this year, the Alumni Association was a presenting sponsor for the football team signing day ceremony, which took place yesterday. With right. a virtual live stream, the Nittany Lions have brought in another highly ranked recruiting class uh, with the team expanding its recruiting base nationally. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment with Coach Terry Smith and talk more about uh, the partnership that we have with Penn State Football and Penn State Athletics. So let's go ahead and welcome Terry into the show. Coach, how are you tonight? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, much like John, I, I did some shoveling today, so my back might be a little bit tight. <laughs> Coach, let me let me take a minute and tell folks a little bit about you if they if they're not familiar. Terry was a standout wide receiver here at Penn State. He is now in his seventh season uh, as the Nittany Lions defensive recruiting coordinator 
and uh, cornerbacks coach. Uh, coach Smith added the title of assistant head coach following the 2015 season. In his role as defensive recruiting coordinator, Coach helps the Nittany Lions to secure seven consecutive top 25 classes, including a top five class in 2018 and top 15 classes, uh, five out of the last six seasons. He was a three-year starter at wide receiver here at Penn State. He still dots the Penn State record books, tied for ninth in career receiving touchdowns, 13th in career yardage, 14th in career receptions. Uh, he played in three consecutive bowl games, including the Holiday Bowl victory over BYU in 1989 and that Fiesta Bowl win over Tennessee in 1991. A team that went, John, as you remember, 11-2, and two, finishing number three in the polls. Uh, Terry played in the pro uh, NFL arena football and in the Canadian Football League as well. Thanks for joining us, Coach. It's good to see you. He didn't. He wasn't wearing a, that uh, beard though when he played for Joe Paterno. <laughs> no, no, you, you couldn't wear any facial hairs back then, though. <laughs> no, and look, as I was reading through the stats, I was thinking, well, holy cow, he's still on the he's still in the record books when we barely threw the football back then. So. It was, uh, uh, it shows the, the impact that you had on the field. But before we get to the field, let's talk a little bit about your recruiting process. You're now recruiting Penn Staters or future Penn Staters to come and play here. But, but walk us through what your process was to become a Penn State Nittany Lion. Yeah, the, you know, a, a long story short, uh, you know, I was a high school coach at Gateway High School in Western Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh, which is the high school I attended as well. Um, you know, I had been the head coach for 11 seasons. I was also the athletic director for the last nine seasons. And, you know, I had a pretty good roster and a couple good players and one in particular, a kid named Thomas Whitson, who was my quarterback. And a guy walks in my office who wants to recruit him. And, you know, it's, it's the story of the alumni network, the Penn State alumni network. The guy's name was Matt Rule. Matt <laughs> Rule played in the, in the mid nineties here. Uh, you know, he, he had just gotten the job at Temple yep. and he came in to recruit my quarterback, Thomas Woodson, who Thomas ended up going to play at Akron, but, when he walked into my office, I had a prior player that I had coached in my office that was attending the uni Ohio State University. Uh -oh. And long, long story short, he had some problems going on that I, I had to attend to. Matt Rule sat in and listened to how I treated him and said, I need a guy like you on my staff. <laughs> and fast forward, we, we met for like one day. He offered me the job. Three days later, I started at Temple under Matt Rule, Penn Stater, who's now the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Right. Uh, I went to Temple University for one season. Um, one year to the date, Coach Franklin got the job and, and offered me a, a position. I was an offensive guy, coached the receivers at Temple, and Coach Franklin brought me to Penn State as a defensive back coach and you know the past seven years have, have been some of the best times and moments in my Penn State career um, you know it's just been a, a, a great great opportunity for me to come back to a university that provided me so many opportunities and continues to pro provide me opportunities so I just feel like I'm blessed and, and, and very fortunate to be where I'm at. I, I guess you were recruited twice to Penn State Terry the last yeah, time yeah. coach for the first two, time two, as, a, two. as a player. What, yeah, what, two, what was your experience like being recruited as a player out of high school? Yeah, so, you, you know, I've been recruited to Penn State by two of the best all-time coaches at Penn State. You know, obviously right. back in the 80s, you know, Coach Paterno came to my home and, and yeah. visited. And, um, you know, that year, year was the year that Penn State won its last national championship. You know, went in that Fiesta Bowl in, in 87. Right. Um, you know, and I knew right there that it, it was the place for me to be. Um, you know, back then, recruiting was pretty much regional. So I had your Pitt, West Virginia, 
Penn State, Maryland, all the Eastern Coast teams. Right. Uh, but I, I knew Penn State was a place when I met Joe. Uh, Tom Bradley recruited me as well. Yep. And the relationship I built with those two guys, I knew it was the proper fit. And then, you know, my dad was an, uh, an alumni, you know, class of 68. Um, it just made it easy for me. And fast forward 30 plus years, I know for a fact it was the right decision. Great. Well, it's been a great decision for Penn State ever since then. <laughs> because you had a great career here as a, as a uh, student athlete. And now we're happy, happy to have you back on the, uh, the coaching staff for these last seven years. Uh, looking at this particular year's recruiting class, the 2020 uh, class that just signed up uh, yesterday, uh, how would you evaluate this year's class and the potential that these new Nittany Lion uh, have, can have within the program right in the next couple of years? Yeah, we, we feel really, really good about this class. We're excited. You know, we had seven guys on offense, seven guys on defense, and a specialist that we signed. Right. Um, so, you know, we're very balanced on both sides of the ball and, and getting a specialist, you know, in today's time, you, you, you have to have that guy that can make those critical kicks and, and placements of, of the punch. So, sure. you know, offensively, you know, to get a guy like Nate Bruce out of Harrisburg, you know, we feel really good about him up front and Langdon Tingwell, who's, who brings us great length and athleticism, which, you know, we always need guys like that up front. And then to go out and get a couple more receivers, uh, Harrison Wallace, you know, is a kid that was committed to Duke that we were able to get him to flip his decision to us. We're really excited about him. And then Lonnie White, the in-state kid, you know, he's, he's kind of a throwback player that, you know, when Paterno recruited me, they, they loved multi-sport athletes. And this guy is a tremendous multi-sport athlete. He's probably going to be drafted in the first, if not the first, the second round of Major League Baseball. Yeah. Um, just a tremendous player and talent that we're really excited about. Uh, you know, we got a quarterback in this class that we're excited, Christian Veyu. Right. Um, you know, guy, he has a strong arm. He's super smart. He's very, very accurate. So, we're looking forward to him. Um, Leon Clifford, you know, Sean Clifford's brother, right. you know, it, it, it runs deep in the family with the Cliffords. You know, we're excited for him as well. And, you know, and then to wrap up the offensive side, Khalil Dinkins, who has unlimited potential at tight end, really excited about what he's going to bring. His best football is yet ahead of him. So really, really excited. On a defensive side, you know, we went and got uh, a defensive end, uh, out of out of Indiana, um, you know, he's Rodney McGraw brings great athleticism. We've had really good defensive ends here the last few years. And, oh, yeah. you know, he's going to continue that with us. So we're excited about him. Got some kids from Detroit. You know, Coach Tim Banks, who's from Detroit, does a great job of connecting the dots for us to, to solidify these guys. Jamari Button, you know, is a big, strong, athletic, fast linebacker to continue LBU. Um, Jalen Reed is a smart safety that's going to make all the calls on the back end. We're really excited about him. And then we got the two twins, Kalen and Kobe, who were just excited about those guys. So we got you know, two. We feel like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So we're, we're, we're really excited. You know, we also got Jeff Davis, who's a, another DB, a corner for us that we feel good. He's a fast, athletic kid. And, and then we got a, you know, a specialist in, in Sonder said, Hey, check. Um, we're excited. You know, we were happy that despite the, the start of our season, we were able to keep the guys that were all committed to us. And um, but it's a testament to the type of kid that we recruit, you know, and that we bring into our Penn State locker room and into our Penn State family. Great. Terry, as you guys are approaching the recruiting process, um, what are the team's goals during uh, during the recruiting process? Are there certain goals that you have each year when you looked at? Uh, is, is it basically, you know, you think of the NFL, right? And they only have so many picks and that they're looking to fill certain needs. Do you take that approach when you're recruiting uh, for, for Penn State football as well? Yeah, absolutely. So each year, you know, there's, there's needs that you're going to have that are glaring. So, you know, one of the needs we, we, we needed to get a defensive end. Uh, we still have maybe a three to five 
more picks that we can get for February signing. Right. Uh, so we're going to need to go get another defensive end to solidify our roster. We're probably going to need to get another DB to solidify, solidify our roster. And then you're always looking for the long, lengthy offensive tackles or any type of game changer in the skill position. You know, we all want another Saquon Barkley, you know, <laughs> or, or, or a KJ Hamler. You know, you're looking for those guys that can score touchdowns right now, like Mike Kosicki. And, you know, what a great past weekend our former NFL guys had this past weekend with those guys scoring tons of touchdowns. So, you know, you're always looking for those guys that can change the game immediately. Um, but it, But the most important thing is, to get guys that fit us, that fit our culture, that, yeah. that, you know, they're good students, they're good athletes, they're good people, they come from fa- sound uh, families, and, and that they just fit us, you know, and we feel like those guys will play harder for us than a guy that we have to convince that doesn't really fit the culture of Penn State. Yeah, well, as, as we saw uh, yesterday, Terry, uh, you had some notable alumni. I welcome uh, the recruits for the program and welcome to the university. Uh, how do these kind of messages uh, resonate with the players and their families when they see the impact that Penn State can have, you know, particularly when they get a chance to see so many successful alumni in, in so many uh, different career fields? I tell you what, it was it was one of the most powerful parts of our event yesterday to to have such notable alumni to present our guys from, you know, your Allen Robinsons and Amoses of the world to Wanda Bryant and, you know, the head of Merck. And I mean, just so many talented people that grace the presence of Penn State University and are willing to give back, you know, and much like the Penn State Alumni Association, you know, we're, we're in all 50 states strong and deep and we're all over the world and we're very active. We're, we're very active to try to help these guys. And, you know, they play a big part in how we recruit these guys and bring them into our organization uh, for, for their future. We tell our kids, you know, you're not just making a four-year commitment to Penn State football. This is a 40-year decision that you're making because you're going to have the Penn State Alumni Network behind you the rest of your life. So, you know, that's just a, a great example of the proof is in the pudding of how such great prominent people were a part of our program uh, yesterday to, to bring in our, our newest crew of Penn State football guys. Well, Terry, you mentioned, you mentioned the CEO of Merck, Ken Frazier. Uh, I think we have some clips to share. Uh, if, we could, if we could roll those so that alumni who are tuning in, if you missed signing day, you can see some of these videos that we have of alumni welcoming our recruiting class. I am Ken Frazier, CEO of Merck and a Penn State graduate. On behalf of the strongest alumni network in the entire world, the Penn State Alumni Association would like to welcome you to National Signing Day Live. In the first round of the 2021 National Signing Day Draft, the Nittany Lions select from Bristol Eastern High School in Bristol, Connecticut, defensive back Jeffrey Davis. <laughs> Yeah, that that I that is wonderful. That Absolutely, and, you know, and and it's and it's a little serendipitous. Ken Frazier lives in Connecticut. The the student athlete that he announced is from uh, from Bristol, Connecticut. Uh, I I got to see that interview with Jeff Davis and his mom and dad, and you see the, you know, you just see the joy of of all the hard work that they've put in to see some of their dreams come true. Terry, take us into the living room when you go in and you sit down with parents or into the zoom room now in 2020 right Uh, that's right what is the recruiting pitch uh when you're going out and talking about why penn state is the place for um for that student athlete to come and compete and learn well you know obviously these these student athletes play football at a high level you know so they're gifted athletically they're talented that way uh, but the, the biggest pitch that we sell to them is our alumni association. 
you know, the largest dues paying alumni association in the world. Um, there, which, in, you know, the, the, the line that I like to use means that they're active. They want to participate in your success. And so, you know, and then to have this event with, with these prominent people that, that grace the campus of Penn State, it's just proof that we're not giving lip service. So when we talk to a kid through Zoom or in person with that kid, we're, we're supporting that, that information that, you know, it, it's been a, a great experience for all of us to continue to grow with the Penn State Alumni Association combined with our football letterman um, yeah, Letterman's club. Yeah, yeah that, that's the biggest tool that we use in recruiting. Uh, obviously, our education is top shelf. We like to, to say that we can provide you the best of all worlds. We can provide you world-class academics along with world-class football. So there's not many universities that can offer you both such great alumni network, academics, and football like we do. So, you know, if a kid is truly into academics and the alumni association and all that it can do, I mean, we're, we're a top two or three school in the nation. Well, I'm sure uh, you can use your personal background at Penn State uh, too, uh, Terry, being having been re a recruit and a student athlete here as well as a coach. And you can really speak from experience and let the recruits know and their families as well, just exactly what they can expect at Penn State uh, in all phases of their life ahead. Yeah, you know, I, I oftentimes tell my story, you know, I'm, I'm a three generation guy. Yeah. You know, my dad went, graduated in 68. I graduated in 91. My son graduated in 2008. My yeah. daughter Haley, who's in, in, in the WorkLink program at Penn State now. I also have a nephew uh, his name's Terry Tank Smith, who's on the football team now. I have a niece that's attending. I have another nephew that just graduated. Well, his ceremony's coming up here shortly in December uh, from Penn State. So I tell the recruits that anything that I tell them, it's my testimony. It's not a story because I just am employed by Penn State. It's my life. I'm telling them just my journey has been the greatest experience you could imagine. And it's been provided by Penn State. You know, I had an awesome experience as a student athlete from 87 to 91, been graced and, and, and just so thankful to have the opportunity to come back and coach on the staff. Um, you, you know, I'm just so fortunate and Penn State has been so great to me and, and to my family. You know, my son, Justin, who played here and then went on and played five years in the NFL, right. came back and worked for the university for a couple years. And, you know, Penn State has just, they've lived up to the bill. They, they've, they've done exactly what they've always said they would do, support their students, support them while they're on campus to get a great education and then support them with their, their future business endeavors, whatever that is. So, you know, there's, there's no greater support than, than our Penn State Alumni Association. Absolutely. We got a couple questions that are coming in. Uh, so I'm going to share a couple of those with you. Um, so some, some folks are, are wondering about how we choose which areas of the country to recruit. Are you just finding the, the best talented players and going to where they are? Or do you, do you look at certain areas of the country and target uh, the best players in that area and try to recruit them to Penn State? And in, in particular, Pennsylvania. How, how do we go about recruiting Pennsylvania? Yeah, so Pennsylvania obviously is the most important territory that we have. Uh, so each of the 10 assistant coaches is assigned a portion or a part of Pennsylvania. So me personally, I'm assigned to the Pittsburgh, Allegheny County area, and also the Philadelphia city area as well. So I have the two major cities or my responsibility. And then, you know, Coach Pry is responsible for the Harrisburg area. And, and we all have our own region split up. And then beyond that, we have territories throughout the country. So, you know, we have three or four coaches in the state of Florida. We have three coaches in the state of Georgia. We have three coaches in New Jersey, a couple coaches in Maryland. Obviously all the neighboring 
states to Pennsylvania, we recruit those heavy. So that six hour radius is a heavy recruitment. Right. Now, when it comes to specialists like punters, lone snappers, kickers, quarterbacks, we go anywhere in the country to find those guys because you just can't find them in each pocket every year. So, you know, and then we also recruit nationally, you know, just based on what's going on geographically, regionally. If if there's not enough offensive linemen in that six hour radius, then we expand it to Texas and we may go to California or wherever we need to go. So if we can find those guys in that six hour radius, we like to hone into those guys because it's an easier sell and pitch because Penn state is strongest in this Northeast region. Sure. And also that six hour drive is, is makes it more convenient for them to get on and off campus. And for their families to get up to see them. <laughs> when they Absolutely. Them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you, go ahead, John. You do have personally a strong ties uh, all across Pennsylvania, each major city at, uh, at each end. But of course, you spent a major part of your life in Pittsburgh before you uh, spent the, decided to spend the rest of it in State College, shall we say. Uh, how often do you run into Penn Staters when you're out uh, recruiting that area? And, and what kind of interactions do you have? Uh, have with uh, alumni and fans that you meet? Uh, do they give you any good tips on people? Or can they be helpful uh, with uh, within all the rules and regulations of the NCAA? Yeah, so, you know, when I go back home to, to Pittsburgh and visit family or if I'm on the road recruiting or uh, any part of the state, you know, I had the opportunity, like I said, to be a head coach at Gateway for 11 years and nine as the AD and so I was involved in many different committees. So I, I essentially know almost every football coach in the state of Pennsylvania and every athletic director in the state of Pennsylvania. And yeah, when you're on the road in, in PA, you're, you're constantly running into Penn State alumni. Uh, I get emails often on leads and tips of, hey, there's a great kid over here in Lock Haven, or there's a great kid in the key sport, or there's a kid over here you need to take a look at. And, and most of them turn out to be pretty, pretty good um, because everyone knows there's a certain talent pool that we have to have to live up, up live and to live up to the standard of what we want Penn State to be. So, you know, we, we can't just have all every Tom, Dick and Harry to come here, but that select talent pool, you know, we, we get leads all the time from alumni. So now that I started recruiting Philly, I'm, I'm getting a lot more leads coming through there as well. So, you know, it's a it's a great recruiting process and it's assisted by our alumni big time. Great. Oh, hey, John, don't, don't let Terry sell, sell this short. Terry is an absolute star. Like he can't go anywhere in Pittsburgh without people recognizing him. We went out there with Coach's Caravan and Coach Franklin's over here and all the other coaches are here. And uh, people just want to talk to Terry Smith. Oh, there's there's Terry Smith. Let me let me talk to Terry Smith. So he's a, he's, he's a celebrity in Pittsburgh. I, I don't know about that, Paul. <laughs> hey, I'm from I'm from there, so so I do know people. Yeah. I guess from you know from from playing days, and then you know just being active when I was an AD coach. You know, I, I I'm I, I've been blessed to be able to touch young people and, and, and have an impact on their lives and, you know, at the high school level and then now at the collegiate level. So, you know, I sleep well at night knowing that I'm treating people the right way. So hopefully my reputation is a good one. Well, you're a very lovable person and that's at the heart of it all. Absolutely. Coach, I know we're running short on time with you. I know you have other responsibilities, but you talk about the impact that you have on other people. And I don't want to let you leave tonight without talking about your involvement with Special Olympics. Yeah, Special Olympics is near and dear to my heart. Uh, I have a special needs daughter. Her name's Haley. Uh, she's a Special Olympian. She, she performs in track and field each year. Um, you know, I've been a great supporter, fan. Um, you know, one year I was able to be the Grand Marshal of the, the Special Olympics and you know, when I have time, you know, throughout our busy schedule, I'm, I'm a volunteer coach. Um, I can't make the full-time commitment because I can't be there all the time. But anytime I'm there, you know, I want to contribute and help. And, uh, 
you know, it's just so rewarding to, to be able to give back to a community like that. And, you know, here at Penn State, it, it's fantastic. It's just, a, it's, it's remarkable, the resources that are here for special needs families. You know, obviously I lived in Pittsburgh and we just, we didn't have those resources in Pittsburgh the same way we do here at Penn State. And, you know, my daughter's gone through the LifeLink program and now she's in the WorkLink program and it's all tied together with Special Olympics and, um, you know, Supraternal who does a great job with, yeah. with, with that. And I mean, it's just been fantastic. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that's near to me. And it also, and you also uh, are a model then for our current uh, athletes as to how they can contribute to the community uh, in the future and how they can give back to others. Absolutely. You know, to, to give and to serve others is far more rewarding for everyone. And, you know, for us to have the ability to teach our student athletes the importance of that. You know, oftentimes when they first get on campus, you know, we tell them, OK, we got to do community service. You got to do this or that. And, you know, they're like they've never done it before. So they're like, ah, coach, I don't really want to do it. And then once they go for the first time it's more rewarding for them than actually like the Special Olympians. So our kids embrace it and they love it. And, you know, each year the football team has broken the record for community service hours from the prior year. So it's a goal of ours to continue to do that, to continue to support our community and, and all those special need programs. And, 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 and even on top of not even the special needs program, but just giving back to the community just to say thank you. You know, we're blessed and fortunate to, to be on a big stage where thousands of people get to see us perform on Saturday afternoon. And, you know, the, the community kids, they look up to these guys. So to, to be able to, to push that and to sell that to our kids, it's, it's big time. And, and, and they're a great uh, hit among the student community at Fawn every year as well. Absolutely, you know, they, they get ready to do the dance because they're trying to win that dance off competition. You know, <laughs> one of our core values is competing everything we do. So, you know, right. those guys are put performing and getting their skits ready. So, I mean, they look, they look forward to that thing every year. And that's, that's you know, even that, you know, you, you talk about Fawn and, you know, the, the, the largest philanthropy fundraiser on campus anywhere in the world right. I mean put together by students it just right. tells you the makeup of Penn State you know just a special place surely is well hey coach we appreciate the time that you've been able to spend with us you know our alma mater says may our lives swell thy fame and certainly you're swelling the fame of dear old state every day in what you do so keep up the great work and thanks so much for joining us on football letter live I appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, John, for having me. Anytime. Great. Take care, Terry. All right. Bye-bye. Well, John, we're, we're going to have to have Terry come back and, and just talk about, you know, not just the recruiting class, but talk about Terry Smith, the football player and the coach. I, I can listen to coach talk uh, on and on and on. He's, he's an inspirational guy. And he, he was one of the great ones. Absolutely. Well, hey, look, the final season, final, I guess it's considered postseason in some ways, but it's the final um, final game on our regular season schedule. We will play Illinois this week. The Big Ten schedule seems to be uh, falling apart all around us with games getting canceled, uh, but um, our game is still on for Illinois, and so talk about some of the keys to the game. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, the uh... – Current 2020 snowball snowball taking place here. See how it can rival that 1995 uh, snowball against uh, Michigan. Uh, but uh, maybe first, before we get into that, I should point out uh, that oh, I'm happy <laughs> we had. I have some shots there. Great. Uh, the uh, we we also had some. Uh, of our athletes this just this week uh, received Big Ten honors too. Pat Fryer moved right. on the uh, honor is the Ted Qualick, uh, Dallas Clark uh, tight end of the year uh, in the Big Ten. And uh, we've had uh, a couple of other players uh, make uh, Big Ten 
uh, teams, Mike Miranda and uh, Will Fries on the uh, offensive line were second team Big Ten. Uh, Michael Mennett, uh, Rashid Walker, Jahan Dotson were all third team uh, from our offense. Uh, Dotson also got uh, honorable uh, mention as a uh, kick returner. He hasn't, didn't take too many of them, but he had some spectacular ones when he did. Uh, and Fry's got the sportsmanship award. Defensively, uh, we had a, an interesting combination. Shaka Tony and Jason Owe both won uh, first team Big Ten honors as at defensive end. It's the first, uh, we've had both of our defensive ends uh, take first team Big Ten honors uh, since uh, back in 1998 when it was Courtney Brown and Brad Scioli. Wow. And then we also had uh, Jaquan uh, Brisker uh, take third team honors, Joey Porter, uh, Lamont Wade, they were all on the third team. Tariq uh, Castro Fields, uh, even though he only played uh, about four games this year, uh, was on the third team, all Big Ten. Uh, PJ Mustafer and, and uh, Antonio Shelton and Brandon Smith were all honorable mentions. Okay, well, let's move on to that uh, snow, pending snowball here with uh, Illinois as our opponent. Uh, Illinois this year has ranked number 95 in total offense, uh, but they've been number 29 in rushing offense. Uh, unfortunately, 100 for them, 112th in passing offense and 110 in scoring offense. Uh, they, they, they run kind of a two quarterback system, uh, similar to Penn State in, in that Brad Peters, a senior, is uh, their primary passing quarterback, but uh, when they want the running quarterback in there, it's Isaiah Williams, who's uh, just a sophomore and uh, really a great uh, running back as well as uh, having some passing capabilities. Uh, I, Illinois has not been particularly effective this year in the red zone. Uh, their red zone, uh, they've had 24 uh, trips into the red zone. They've only come out with 10 touchdowns, but they do have a, a great, well, the second leading running back in the, in the Big Ten this year has been Chase Brown uh, at Illinois, 93 uh, attempts for 510 yards, a 5.5 average and two touchdowns. Uh, one thing that's going to uh, hurt them, I think, uh, this weekend, Josh, uh, Imator Bibi was their best receiver for the last two years. He just chose to announce this week that he's uh, declaring for the NFL draft and uh, it's, he's not expected to play here at uh, Penn State this weekend. So that'll be tough for them on their, a tough loss for them for this game uh, on their passing offense. Okay, now how does Penn State stack up against Illinois? Well, of course, right now we're 52nd and Total offense about the middle of the pack, number 64 in rushing offense and 45 in the passing offense. Uh, we're down at 79 in the scoring offense with just 26 and a half points a game. How many you score isn't important. It's just how many more you score than your opponent. Right. But uh, at any rate, uh, we are 23rd in total defense, uh, 25th in rushing defense, 38th in passing defense. Uh, and, but uh, our scoring defense, uh, we hold their, our opponents to 28.5 uh, points per game. Uh, I think one edge that uh, Illinois has that I see uh, over Penn State is in the turnover margin. Unfortunately, they're number 11 in the country. Uh, Penn State is number 115. And of course, that, that was mainly back in the first uh, half of our uh, season. But that, I think, first of all, is one of the most important keys for Penn State to win again this weekend is no turnovers uh, or critical penalties. And then I think uh, Penn State has to establish their running game because uh, that's where Illinois has, has been uh, having some trouble with their uh, rushing defense. So we've got to establish that running game offensively while at the same time our defense controls the Illinois runners because that's their strength. Uh, so if uh, 
the defense can control their running game uh, and our offense can establish the running game and set up the passing game from there. I think those visitors uh, uh, coming into Beaver Stadium uh, will have uh, an even tougher time than they've had all season long in the red zone. And we will extend our win streak to four. Finish, great way to finish out the regular season with a four, uh, four game winning streak. Absolutely. John, you know, as I think back, uh, I want to get some of your final thoughts on, on the season. You know, it seems like a tale of, a tale of two seasons, if yeah, you will, yeah. with uh, the five game losing streak and now on a three game winning streak looking like uh, likely a four game winning streak. If, if we play, if we play the way we've been playing the last three weeks, I think we'll handle Illinois, but what are your, some of your takeaways from the 2020 season? Well, I still, I can't help going back to that very first game at Indiana and wondering how different this season could have been if we, they had not had that uh, very disappointing uh, loss there uh, on that, uh, you know, critical, questionable play <laughs> at the pi at the pylon and, and the way that uh, the problems that we had getting to that point. Uh, had we had never gotten to that point and walked off uh, victors uh, without going into overtime, I think it would have been a different uh, feeling. We, they, it really took the team a while, I think, to get over that. And uh, not, not that uh, it was a surprise when uh, uh, Ohio State beat us here, uh, even at home, uh, there's just so much of a difference in a game that normally every time you have Ohio State at home or Michigan at home, it's the annual whiteout. And that puts so much additional support for the team and so much gives them so much more adrenaline and energy. They live off that. And I think that is such a, a, an important factor that, that unfortunately we did not have this year. But the game that I really heard, I think, was Maryland. They came in and they surprised us with those uh, early scores with the speed that they had from uh, a couple of new wide receivers. And uh, uh, it was such a, a total flip over the uh, game that we had played just a year earlier down uh, at Mar Maryland when we totally dominated them down there. And by halftime, all of their fans we're headed for the exits, and the only people left were the Penn Staters watching the, the blowout. Well, they came around, and they really turned the tables on us. And then again, uh, we, we just really weren't prepared, I don't think, at, at Nebraska. Right. And Iowa uh, came in here, and Iowa was one of the uh, top three teams, I think, right now in uh, the Big Ten. Uh, they're, they really deserved uh, their 6-2 uh, and two record in the Big Ten this year, and then we finally got going, uh, thank goodness, out at Michigan. And of course, that's a great place to get going because they're one of our uh, key opponents each year. Yeah. And that turned everything around. And now we're really back in stride. Uh, the offensive line is playing great ball. Uh, we've got complimentary football between our offense and defense working out for us. We've uh, really picked up the rushing game in the, the last three uh, contests. And I think we're really back to full strength. And, uh, uh, we've got the uh, emotional uh, juice and we've got the uh, mental attitude. And I think uh, we're gonna finish out this season in a great shape. Yeah, you know, if at the beginning of the year, you told me we were gonna be four and five or potentially five and five now with the bowl game. Right. Um, it, it would have been disappointing. Um, right. I, 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 I'd much rather lose the first five games of the season and win the last four though. <laughs> right. And, and end the season with momentum and, and optimism. Right. Um, I think we've seen a lot from our young players, which you surely have. is a reason to be optimistic for the future. You bet. Um, our, our cornerbacks in particular have played, at times like young cornerbacks, but we've also seen some flashes of brilliance from them. I think their, their performance in particular at Michigan um, is a sign of, of things, of great things to come. So um, I'm enthusiastic about that. 
I know this might be an unpopular take, but um, I'm not going to say it was potentially his best coaching job, but it, it was a heck of a coaching job by our coaching staff to keep this team together from falling apart at 0-5. Oh, yeah. um, I think it was much easier to, to lose a handful of, of, of future games than it was to go on the win streak that we have and to be able to kind of maintain the, the psychological or the psyche of the team. Right. And, and yes. keep that locker room unified and focused on what the job is at hand um, with all the other things going on this year, I think is, is a, is a huge takeaway for me. It surely is. And in this season, uh, as different as it was with the uh, COVID uh, situation, Penn state protected its players, its team uh, better than any other uh, team, at least in the big 10 that, that we see close up. And uh, from what we see generally uh, throughout the country, I, I can't think there's any, uh, any school that did a better job of dealing with all of the uh, unique situations they had to do to keep the team safe and then keep them working together when they can only be at social distance apart and, and only working in their individual groups and very seldom having the whole team on the field at the same time working and building that uh, spirit and that uh, just the, the, the flow that goes with knowing how the others are going to react when out there. And certainly it's much better to have the winning streak at the end rather than the losing streak at the end. And you set a great platform then to launch into the next season. And when you do that with a lot of uh, young players who've shown uh, what they can do and give you in the seasons ahead, it's, it's a very positive uh, finish to the season. Absolutely. And, and an opportunity to continue um, the streak of consecutive bowl games uh, we're going to play. Uh, speculation has it right now in either the Cheez-Its Bowl in Arizona or the Duke Mayo Bowl in Charlotte. I, my preference would be the Cheez-Its Bowl, as you know, John. We I, can't um, I, I can't imagine particularly those uh, kids on the, the juniors and seniors on the team right now. Right. And look back to that uh, 2017 uh, season wrap up in the Fiesta Bowl. Right. In, in, in Phoenix and the great time that they had out there and the, uh, how much they enjoyed themselves. I, I, I can imagine they would be rooting for that uh, particular bowl game this year. I have another great uh, trip to Phoenix. It all, it's also uh, just a week away from this Saturday. So they don't only have a week of practice that right. they'd have to have, uh, go through to get ready. And then they could have uh, at least the last half of the Christmas break uh, New Year's break uh, available to spend with their families and that sort of thing again. But uh, I'm I'm giving I'm giving out a personal opinion there. Yeah, as but, you um, know, we've we've been very successful in the state of Arizona as well. We've, we've I don't never think lost. we've ever lost a postseason <laughs> game there, right? <laughs> right. That's that's certainly a positive. Well, hey, John, I have greatly enjoyed this season with you. What started off as a as an eight episode experience is now. <laughs> 15 episodes in uh, we're going to do a 16th which is just going to be a video that we email out to participants uh, it'll be our postseason uh, episode but um, I've, I've greatly enjoyed our 15 weeks together here on football letter live I'm so grateful for the time that you have spent with us and with the fans and kind of giving us uh, your insight on uh, on Penn State football and also what we've met a dozen or so of just some really inspirational lettermen and yes. wonderful people all around the program. And so I've had so much fun. It's great to have the opportunity to show them off and show uh, what they do in their professional lives after uh, they've spent their uh, student lives playing football here at Penn State. Uh, it's this has been a, a totally new experience for me. <laughs> well, I'm, yeah. I'm a writer and uh, not somebody used to performing live uh, in front of a live audience and having people look at me. I'd like to be in the background and just do a job and let them see it uh, when it's finished. But uh, it's it's been uh, great having the opportunity to interact uh, with uh, former players, with uh, former uh, band members, former Nittany Lion mascots, 
uh, people who are involved uh, in the whole uh, experience of a great football weekend at Penn State, and then uh, go on to show how uh, they will continue to represent our university after they uh, graduate from their student days. And uh, they will represent the university with pride and bring honor to it. And uh, it's, it's been a wonderful new experience. Yeah, it's, it's been so much fun. Uh, John, you deserve to be in front of the camera. You've done great in front of the camera this year. If, uh, if we know Ridge Riley's looking down uh, and he'd probably say that there's Mr. Penn State right there, John Black. And so, John, I know our, our audience, I've, I've loved hearing your stories and uh, getting to, to kind of hear the man behind the words for so many years in the Penn State football letter. And so thank you so much. Well, thank you. I did. I always felt I had a better face for radio, but we'll we'll take whatever we get. <laughs> that is wonderful. And I want to thank all of you who are still zooming in with us, or if you're on Facebook Live and you're you're tuning in. Thanks so much for sticking with us all season. It's been great to have your support, especially during this 2020 unusual season. I think we have started something here because of the pandemic uh, and because of COVID-19. That's going to continue on. This Football Letter Live programming uh, is going to be something that you should look forward to now uh, for future football seasons. And we hope to continue to bring the same inspirational stories from everybody around the Penn State football program. And so to you, our audience, thank you so much for joining us. If you're interested in our other virtual programs, go to our website at alumni.psu.edu. You can find a whole array of virtual events to keep people connected during these tough times. I know many of the people watching us are members of the Alumni Association. Thank you so much for your support. If you're not a member, go back out to our website at alumni.psu.edu and you too can become a member of the world's largest alumni association. Thanks again. Thank you for tuning in. John, until next season, thanks for all you do for the university, for the glory, and for the future. We are Penn State.